Hey everyone and welcome to this new video. On my channel we talk a lot about the topic of Home Assistant, but that doesn't mean that Home Assistant is the only smart home system available on the market. That's why I thought we should take a look at the competition in this video. A smart home system that I have also used is OpenHab. During the time I wasn't using it, I wondered if it might even be better than Home Assistant and how well I can manage it from start to finish right after the intro. Enjoy! So, what I have already done is set up OpenHab. It's really, um, really simple. Just like with Home Assistant, there are various ways to do this. I chose the Docker version because it was the easiest way to set it up quickly. I will link the installation options in the video description. And after I have run the Docker Compose, you can access this page using port 8280 or 8443. Now I can set a username here, create a password, and confirm the password, set the time, start the setup, which I can do later, and I can already install add-ons directly here. I'm just going to skip that now and only install the basic UI. So now I'm already in the overview, and I have to honestly say that I don't really remember how everything was set up. So if you scroll back through the videos, I have published a lot of OpenHab tutorials at some point, but that was quite a while ago, and therefore it's not as present anymore. That means for me, it is basically also a first setup or an initial overview of OpenHab itself. First of all, everything here is obviously still empty, so you can't see anything in the device properties and so on. To do this, we first need to set something up. This can be done in the settings under bindings. Here, you will find a whole lot of pre-configured add-ons that you can install. For simplicity, I will now install the Tado binding here, so we can at least see something. To set this up, that is, to add a Tado bridge, press the plus under things, and then select Tado here. Then I can already choose Tado home here, so the bridge, and log in here as a Tado user. So, after I entered the access credentials, I can see right here that the bridge is online, and theoretically, I can also see what kind of things are included in this Tado bridge. When I click on channels here, I see the home switch, and could link it now with a so-called item. That means I can control it directly from OpenHab. Create new, it can be named the same, and I click here on link. And now I can already see that I have linked it and it is currently on. So when I go to items, I see it there. Here is the switch and it is currently turned on. And to actually have this in the interface now, so to control this item that I just created in the interface, I would need to go to pages here, see my overview page that I currently have, and can add a block. That should contain a toggle card, meaning a switch. And when I configure this switch here, I can tell the switch to control an item, specifically the item that I just created. I can now give it a title to control the Tado bridge. And if I save this now and click on the interface here, you can already see that I can turn the home mode on and off for the Tado bridge. So, I think you have understood the basics of OpenHab. And as far as I can remember, not much has changed in the core system. The UI looks a bit more polished than it did in 2001. However, I have to say that when comparing it to the Home Assistant UI, I actually find the Home Assistant UI to be a bit more attractive. And I can actually understand the idea behind OpenHab that you need to connect devices yourself first before they simply end up in any overview. Because with Home Assistant, I find it really quite chaotic that almost every sensor is directly available and displayed. Sometimes I wish that you could filter everything. Sure, you can at least hide them now, but it still feels like you just load everything into Home Assistant first and then delete unnecessary things that you no longer need. The reverse approach is certainly cleaner, but I find the detour of first creating a new item and then displaying that item in the interface with a control mechanism to be somewhat complicated and cumbersome. Of course, once you get used to it, you have understood the basic system. Nevertheless, I must say that I find this aspect to be somewhat better resolved in Home Assistant. In the end, everyone must decide for themselves which smart home system they like best. Personally, I have to say that even after spending some more time with OpenHab, looking at scenes and scripts in addition to those things, I find myself more satisfied with Home Assistant and think that it is overall a bit easier. What I can imagine is that people who really enjoy node programming will get along quite well with OpenHab because as you can see under scripts, you can wonderfully apply this block programming language. Home Assistant cannot do this by default. Of course, you can add this functionality, for example, by connecting with Node-RED, but that requires installing another tool. And that's also something that is really very easy with OpenHab. You essentially have the OpenHab operating system ready to go. You can either install it on a computer or use the Docker version, but then you simply have the complete OpenHab system. 
can install the add-ons and so on and so forth. With Home Assistant, there are various versions, essentially the Home Assistant Core or the Home Assistant Supervisor. One must understand this before even starting with Home Assistant and ideally choose the right version right away, as switching between versions is not so easy. And those who want to keep it simple and install the supervisor will automatically forego the option to install additional external tools, as the supervisor is very picky about external applications that also run on the same machine. So, if you choose the Home Assistant supervisor, you are essentially deciding against running other things on the computer. With OpenHab, it's a bit different because of Docker. You can easily install it and also install a lot of applications alongside it. Well, that should definitely be it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and maybe even found it helpful. If so, I would really appreciate a rating. And then I would say, see you in the next video. Until then, take care and goodbye.